I thought it'd be great to explain how cancel culture really works, or in my case, complete evisceration. And this relates to what's currently being done to GB News by those that want to see it done away with. So when people speak about cancel culture, it kind of annoys me because it sounds so polite. Oh, cancelled. You know, that's for someone that maybe had one event cancelled or, you know, they were uninvited from something or they weren't invited in the first place. You know, people speak about that. Oh, I've been cancelled. And that really is just like dipping a toe in the ocean in terms of what happens when you are completely eviscerated. And that's happened to me on a number of occasions, each one adding to the sum total of being completely eviscerated from the face of the planet, including, you know, continents from which I'm banned. So let's just say, uh, let's not make this about me, but let's make this about GB News. OK, so GB News are here. And the idea is from those that want to control the news agenda and the messaging that goes out that GB News needs to be got rid of because it's not towing the line. It's not saying the same stuff as everybody else. And it's not necessarily kind of perceived by the intellectual elite, you know, as intellectually stimulating enough. It's far too Daily Mail. Well, who gives a shit? If ordinary people want to watch it or someone wants to look at it, who cares? Who cares? It doesn't matter what you think people should be listening to. Ordinary people should be allowed to listen to what the bloody hell they like. Who cares whether you agree or I agree? People should do what they want. People should be free to do what they want. Let me not go off on one. So if you want to get rid of GB News, the first thing you do, and, and I know this because this was me, <laughs> has been me, is me, is repeatedly me. It is your evisceration. Firstly, you go for the advertisers. And uh, this is a well tested system. So you know that what happens is there's a campaign against anybody advertising on the channel and you go onto Twitter and then one by one you pick off the organisations, you tweet them. Are you happy to be associated with this? You go for the CEO of the advertisers. You go for the exec board of the advertisers. You go for anybody linked in any way to the advertising companies. And then once you manage to get one to pull, then you say, oh, well, look, Nike's just made the right decision. Why don't you make the right decision? So the advertisers are an easy, well-tested route for getting rid of either people or entire channels. The next thing uh, is things like Ofcom, which is what you're seeing right now uh, with GB News, a repeated war of attrition. You just keep trying to get an Ofcom complaint to stick. You just keep trying to get an Ofcom complaint to be investigated. That's boring for the channel. It costs time, legal advice, money. You know, it's time consuming and it's obnoxious and it takes, it detracts from the ability to do what is the core focus of your business. So the Ofcom weapon is very effectively used. It was used against me at the Daily Mail, it was used against me at LBC. And there's very powerful people who are very well connected at Ofcom's highest level, who can have cosy little dinners and strongly advise that Ofcom definitely investigate this. You can see how all that happens. Uh, next up is guests. So what you do, uh, forgive my writing, guests, you get guests. So on, a, on an LBC type programme, a phone-in programme, GB News, you get people to sign up to say they won't go on the show. We won't go on the show. We won't go on. The, look at all the oh, 80 of us have signed this list to say we won't appear on it because it's just so terrible. Will you join us? Will you be part of us? We can invite you to other things. We'll reward you. Maybe you'd like a little invite to dinner at, at Sophie's house on Friday. Would you like to sign up to say you will not be a guest on the show? And that's precisely the tactic that The Guardian, James O'Brien and others used against me at LBC was to get political guests to say they would not appear on LBC radio as a whole until I was removed as a producer. And from the boss's perspective, you can't risk losing all your guests if you rely on political commentary to keep yourself alive. So the guest is the next thing. What you can also do if you are a lone voice in a sea of lefties, for example, which I have always been, is you get the other presenters um, on board. So I don't know that this necessarily happens on GB News, but you see how divide and conquer. Well, you don't want to be near that person because, look, they're going to get fired. You don't want to be like Lawrence Fox, guys, because he just got fired. But you can get the other presenters. So if I give the LBC example, you get the other presenters to say, well, if I'm on leave, I'm not having Katie stand in on my show. 
or until she's gone, I'm not prepared to do X, Y and Z. Or you just get them all together to have a meeting with the boss that says she needs to go because we're all unhappy. So you can mobilise that as an opportunity as well. And that will be at play in GB News where people get picked off. Um, and there's something much bigger that happens, and it's what I would call the real darkness. At some point, the cumulative effect of all of this is it starts to become too much. And at some point, and this has happened in every single case of every single position I've ever held and been eviscerated from, the darkness happens. And that's one big powerful phone call or meeting between either overseas money, whoever is the funder or the investment or the big money, the darkness, whoever is the real powerhouse in that place, they get the call and they make a decision just like this. That's it. They're gone. Gone. Done. So all of this other stuff is really just you know, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, noise, noise, relentless, relentless, in order to get this one phone call to happen. And in my case, for example, LBC, that was the major, that was the owner of uh, the whole radio, of Global, uh, who finally made the call and went, she's gone. Uh, the Daily Mail, Lord Rothmere was involved. And actually, there was someone that leaked that. There's an inside person at the Daily Mail that leaked that the conversation had happened and I was being disposed of. So I knew six months before I was actually let go or agreed to leave. Um, and in the case of GB News, that's the big that's when will that happen? So overseas investors, because ultimately GB News doesn't really care. It's overseas investment money that's funding this thing. One day that tap gets turned off. And a good example most recently would be the Piers Morgan example. Uh, Talk TV, Murdoch, and Murdoch has been, you know, Piers and Murdoch are inseparable, have been for decades. Finally, that darkness was too much. Even for Murdoch and Piers Morgan, and that conversation happened after Prince Harry's lawyer came out and specifically named Piers Morgan as being responsible or culpable, I know what happened. There'll have been a phone call from Murdoch to Piers just saying, sorry, mate, it's all too much now. We've got to let you go. So that's why Piers Morgan is now going to be a vlogger. And I would say, typically, I get no pleasure whatsoever from seeing other people being either cancelled or eviscerated or removed. There's, I mean, maybe a little bit of pleasure with Piers Morgan, but for everybody else, whether I'm on their side or not, whether they're a vaccine pusher or whatever, there's no pleasure in seeing other people get cancelled or eviscerated because um, I think, you know, it doesn't improve the sum of all of our parts if conversations get fewer and less. Now, there's the apart from the darkness, so that's a Murdoch level, that's a Lord Rothmere uh, level, you know, that is at the, at the darkness level of humanity, big overseas investment funders. Um, there's also these other sort of minor players. So like, for example, with my case, the chief rabbi was involved. You get the heads of churches. You get the heads of um, some charities, uh, Save the Children, Brandon Cox. There's some other things around this darkness, which I could go into, but we don't need to do that here. One of the most painful things of all about cancel culture or it being eviscerated, and this is all building around GB News right now, one of the hardest things, and I still find this now, it happened to me just this week, is you have people see all of this happen around you. And it's happened all my life, really, since I refused to back down from anything I've ever said. Is that people who call themselves um, the freedom movement, right? So people who are like, oh, we're the free speech movement, we're the free speech organisation, we're the free speech channel, or we're a, a freedom festival. Or <laughs> um, So all of the people who I would say are our side, side that simply wants everyone to be OK, everyone to say and think whatever they want and everyone to be as happy as they can be, is when the freedom movement, using that label, using free speech, they don't want any of this coming anywhere near them. And it's one of the hardest things still. And like I say, it happened this week, 
is people take you on because they love what they do. They Maybe they've met you in person. Maybe you've introduced them to your husband or maybe you've allowed them to come to a gig and they've seen your audiences and they've seen how lovely it all is. But the moment they feel even a touch of any of any of this, you know, just maybe one other and, and one other guest saying, well, I'm not performing if she's performing or if her name's there. Or I get asked, is there anyone you won't perform with? And I'm like, why are you asking that question? And others out there will completely understand when I say it is what all of this I see happening. I see the strategy behind it. You know, I used to be in military intelligence. It's not hard to work this stuff out. And the darkness is really terrifying. But the hardest thing emotionally is when those who brand themselves free speech and freedom, freedom festival, they do this to you because they don't want this near them. They will throw you under the bus, even after they've booked you and, and they want to and they've come to your gigs and they see what you're doing and they know that you're even when they know you and they know that your heart is good. They still throw you under the bus and continue to use the freedom banner, even when they become part of the evisceration. And that's truly the very hardest thing of all. And, you know, I say all of this knowing what I've just said about how people don't want you near them because they want to self-preserve for one more day, even when they say that they're all about freedom of speech, but let's just not talk about Tommy or Katie, is that I am banned from GB News <laughs> by these guys, the big guys, the money, the investors, the owners, the those linked um, to the kind of money, 250 million uh, in their account, some of these guys behind GB News uh, the very big money doesn't want any of this problem coming anywhere near it. So I just wanted to do that as an explainer because there's so many, you know, I could do pages of level of detail behind this. But if you hear Ofcom investigation, please know that that's just a tiny piece of an overall strategic plan of attack that can be used to completely annihilate your enemy, which in my case was me, or is now GB News for them. Um, I guess what they hadn't reckoned in on um, and what they can never quite cope with still, the darkness, I mean, is when some of us refuse to stay down. <laughs> when you come back after you've been eviscerated, when you were supposed to go and swing from a tree and instead you just reinvent yourself and come back again. <laughs> and that's how you win, I think, in the end. OK, I'll see you all somewhere on the road.